On today's show, the Antares rocket exploded, and we have all the details, the ups and the downs. Kiss a kiss. So ridiculous. Also, scientists discuss using hydrogels as a potential way of making robots look more human-like. And there's an art exhibit that we're checking out that uh, there's a little more than meets the eye to it. It's Tomorrow Daily. Greetings, citizens of the internet. Welcome to Tomorrow Daily, the best geek talk show in the known universe. I'm your host, Ashley Skeva. Join me, as always, Kale Anonymous. How did I do? I was pretty good. It was a pretty good intro. Okay, I don't want to do it again. I was super nervous about we, that. Okay, I well, we might make you do it again at some point, but you have the lead story today, so okay. let's hit the headlines. <laughs> Wait, can I just really quickly say, right before, uh, I'm sorry, during the taping of our show yesterday, this happened. And a lot of people asked us on Twitter and stuff, why didn't you cover this? And I was like, guys, we were, we, I didn't, we, this is a bubble. We don't know anything that happens in the 30 minutes that we're in here shooting the show. Yeah, but luckily we have the luxury of having more information than anybody that reported it immediately. True. So let's talk about this real quick. We'll glaze over quickly, yeah. you know, what happened. Basically, the Antares rocket uh, exploded yesterday. Such a bummer. During liftoff, it was like, what, 10 seconds after li yeah, like liftoff? Yeah, like six seconds in or something. It we was still real don't, short. We still don't know why. Like, they're, they're still doing some research to find out exactly why. Of course, uh, it's Orbital Science Corps uh, th that made this rocket, and those, those are the ones that are doing the research. Uh, it exploded. There is uh, debris all that. over the place. Man, um, that is so such a bummer. Uh, this orbital made <laughs> Cygnus CR S3 spacecraft was going to bring 5,000 pounds of resupply to the International Space Station, food, Ugh. water, and then equipment for them on the there space station. I think station. science projects on yep. board. There was science all project. kinds of stuff on there. Uh, crab cakes? For crab, maybe crab, crab cakes. No, there definitely Inside. was. There was crab cakes. That's what I'm telling you. Astronaut crab cakes? There Astronaut was crab cakes crab for cakes? a guy that was like from Maryland that's been uh, on the space station for five months. Poor guy. See, this is stuff we couldn't tell you unless, you know, it had already happened. Yeah, yeah, no, So here's, here is some, uh, here's some more information. The Orville has supplied NASA with launch vehicles for more than two decades. Um, yeah, this has been a long time thing. And this is honestly their first like ex like mistake, explosion yeah. uh, that has happened. Uh, so they're saying that they're going to launch more. There's, they're going to definitely bring in their stuff. Of uh, course. Another factor is they're not necessarily worried because they had insurance on the rocket. Okay. Uh, nobody was hurt. Again, that's another that's thing. That's fortunately. Yeah, nobody, nobody was injured or, gosh, killed. I mean, it was an unmanned rocket, and they also had what, like a, how big was the clearing area? It was like, I think it was like 1,400 square feet. Yeah, 1,400 mile launch hazard oh, area. Crazy. Um, uh, 1,400, they, wow, God. Yeah, 1,400 this is their mile second, launch. This is their second attempt to, there was a boat in the way last time, so they didn't launch. And <laughs> they were like, hey, you, yeah, they're in the boat. Stupid, bo stupid boat. But uh, anyway, yeah, so uh, they're going to try it again. This, again, uh, happened in Wallops Island Flight Facility in Virginia. Right. But, uh, yeah, nobody's hurt. They're going to try it again. Yeah. One of the, I mean, obviously, stuff like this rattles up the whole program. It's a bummer. It's yeah. a huge bummer. I mean, uh, our friend, um, this. I mean, all these videos of this is crazy. You can see there's, like, look at all these colorful, like, flames and stuff because of all of the different chemicals and I'm just everything that's on board that kind of makes these rockets is really kind of extraordinary when you see how it's done. And um, it reminded me when I had seen this news of the trip that I took to NASA JPL and uh, Bobic. Ferdowsi actually tweeted about this yesterday, and he's like, oh my, a reminder that space is incredibly difficult. And I mean, but it's, <laughs> and that's is, true. It's, it, you know, hard. We, we always need that reminder that even though it is so much easier now, it's still really hard to take things to space. Especially and it, if you're an independent, you know, an independent space right, it, and, company. And really, I mean, if there is any silver lining out of this, I would love for it to be more funding to NASA and and more funding to private companies. I mean, if you're an investor, more funding to private companies sort of make these things a little bit easier for these, you know, because it's it's really a kind of a shoestring budget for a lot of the things they do. And it's really extraordinary the things that, you know, the space program in many countries, not just the U.S., have been able to accomplish on such small budgets. Yeah, and people tend to focus on the bad when they see something of like course. this. And unfortunately, uh, Orbital... there was two Orbital decades of good before. Yep, and they had never made any mistakes before. Nobody uh, talked about that. Nobody got excited about that. Uh, Orbital, Orbital Science Co uh, Corps... 
Uh, their stock went down 14% after the uh, See, explosion, so that's, that's another a, downside. That's a bummer. So, but that's going to happen. They're going to bring the stuff. Of course. Um, there yeah, was, no one's going to starve. If anyone's worried about the folks up on the International yes. Space Station, I believe there's a SpaceX launch planned for next month. Uh -huh. uh, so if there's anything urgent, they're going to send that up with them. Uh, man, there was one thing on board that I, I think I had read. It was a, a Kickstarter. That was a, uh, I believe it was like a live video camera or the, some type of... Uh, some type of video camera where it was you could control it and it was they had raised a million and a half dollars and it was on board that rocket. Oh Such man, a Such that's a, bummer. a huge bummer. But yeah. Uh, yeah, that that really really was a sad day for science. But hey, everything's gonna be okay. But you know what? Just remember, anybody who's super bummed about this, you gotta have failures in science yeah. to move forward. I think it was two hundred million, by the way, that that they have to recoup to do it to again. To be able to do so, it again. But yeah. again, insurance. So. Yeah. They'll be fine. Everybody seems positive. We again, but we don't know what caused right. it. And fortunately, nobody theories, was hurt or we're killed. Not gonna, yeah, yeah. We're not we're, gonna. Yeah. Listen, we're not qualified to speculate. We are not <laughs> at all. All we know is it exploded and it was horrible. So hopefully, this next news story isn't sad. No, but it is maybe a little bit scary. So uh, one of the problems with robots is, or I guess it's not really a problem for a lot of people, is they prefer to know that they're talking to a robot or interacting with a robot. But one of the reasons why we kind of have this sort of uncanny valley with robots is because the muscle kind of architecture is not quite all there. Like they don't, robots can't have the many, many muscles we have in our faces uh, to recreate different facial expressions. So mm -hmm. Usually it's, it's engine based. There's some sort of armature or, you know, there's mechanic mechanical elements involved. Right, there'd be a whole soup full of you know mechanics and pulling of and up, ups and downs and it, backs and forths. It would be extremely complicated, but this is kind of a cool thing. So uh, the reason why we haven't really made uh, easily replicable faces is because technology isn't quite to the point where it can make something tough but flexible at the same time without it falling apart over time. So in, uh, enter hydrogels. So this is, uh, these are soft hydrated gels that we're looking at and uh, that the scientist is kind of playing with. Uh, Japanese researchers published uh, from Nagoya University, published a study regarding a new hydrogel uh, saying that they had discovered a way to strengthen the gels um, and that they could potentially, because it's a network of synthetic materials, uh, use these hydrogels as muscle, artificial muscle that would be changed by adding water. So this is kind of a really interesting sort of way to kind of make things move or function a little bit differently than a mechanical uh, muscle, quote unquote. So, uh, there, so one of the things they mentioned was the one problem with using things like hydrogels is if you imagine a cube of jello, if it gets nicked, it, it falls apart. Right, yeah. Okay, so kind of the same uh, kind of the same thing with these aerogels. Because they are gels, they aren't as strong. But now they're saying they've kind of discovered a way to make them stronger. And then potentially, because of that, use hydrogels for things like um, facial, like artificial muscles for robots, which could be really strong and, and very interesting. Uh, they said that they, the other one is, they're not just hoping, basically this discovery is just, they're, they're like, look what we discovered, we can make it stronger. We hope other scientists take this information, run with it, and create some new cool stuff. Um, and one of the things they mentioned was drug delivery. So they were saying that aerogels can release in the presence of other chemicals, like so it can disperse knowing exactly where it is in the body based on chemicals that it comes into contact with. So like you would take something or you know, you'd inject something and then it would say, well, I'm looking for this type of antigen and once I find it, I know to disperse. Cool. Which is pretty cool. Wow, so, yeah. Really interesting stuff happening over there. Um, I, we're obviously not anywhere near sort of a, uh, a fully functioning face on a robot that right. is identical to a human, but still really cool research, something I thought Seems was. Seems like it's still gonna be tough to make that face move around. It, 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 yeah. Well, it really is, and it's a huge challenge in robotics to sort of bring humanoid features and expression, um, a full yeah. range of humanoid feature and expression to, uh, to, pe to robots, so very interesting. Oh, we're on the way to creepy robots, but we're just taking small steps at a time. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of creepy robots out anyway. Yeah, I mean, we we, are, we still have right, some. Right, I mean, there's yeah. that newscaster. She's yeah. terrifying. There's so many. Um, okay, so <laughs> last last story is a ferrofluid art exhibit. So I like I always find ferrofluid kind of fascinating. Mm -hmm. You can buy them in little jars. You put a magnet on it, and it spikes up and everything. It's kind of cool. Yeah. 
So uh, this is, I'm going to try really hard to pronounce all this because it's all, it's a, it's a mouthful. This is the art exhibit you can see as he's walking. Look, oh, the frame's moving with him. It looks really simple, but it isn't. So this frame is moving along the wall with somebody until they stop to look at it. This is an art exhibit that literally refuses to leave you alone until you stop and look at it, which is crazy. So this is called Eyecatcher. It's a project by Lin Zhang and Ron Shi Interactive Architecture Lab at University College London. Uh, like I said, it looks really simple. There's a frame with some ferrule fluid in it. You guys saw that and people like looking around at it and stuff. Uh, desperate for attention, obviously. Very much likes attention, so it will follow you and then stop if you stop. Well, how it achieves that is there's actually a pinhole camera in there that tracks your motion and also tracks your face. So um, this is uh, some of the process of making this frame, which is kind of crazy. So there's the ferrule fluid, they're dropping it in, they put all this stuff, a pinhole camera, all this. Th I mean, it's, this is a lot of work. And the cool thing is, is it's actually controlled, how it slides around the wall is by magnet and a giant robotic arm on the other side of the wall moving it around. Wow, that's intense. So here's the face tracking stuff. So it will track your face and if you smile at it, the ferrofluid fluid will rise up and look really cheerful. You see that? Oh, wow. And then if you look real, if you frown at it, it droops to the bottom and looks really sad. So it sticks to the wall with magnets, yes. right? And then it, its motion is based on, its motion is based on the- on The tracking of the camera. Of the camera. And then there's a the robot arm the behind robot the wall that moves it around. So that's which like is, three different types of tech. Look, at, look, here's the, look, there's the robot arm right there. It's crazy. Oh, wow. So they're, that's their, they're testing it right there, and then they put up this wall, and then the, the robot is behind it. But it's, I just thought that that's was so pretty cool. pretty intense, yeah. And I, I wish the art was better, but you know. Right, I loved how simple the exhibit looked, and I, I would love to see in a future iteration of something like this, I would love to see the ferrofluid fluid literally recreate your face. Oh yeah. I'd like to see awesome. it in like some sort of like haunted mansion. Or give or you a moustache. Like Remember those old oh, magnet drawing yeah. things? That'd be good. You had like a little guy's face and a cartoon your, and you if could you're make bald, like, it's like yeah, the yeah, perfect yeah. image for you. Yeah, it'd be perfect. That it would give you so cool. many great stuff. Yeah. But yeah, I thought that was really cool. And I, I just a really interesting little thing. So. Yeah. I like it. Well, that's it for our news. That's it for the headlines. Uh, we were, we're going to be right back. We're going to take a quick 30-second break. We have a back at our Hackett that is pretty amazing if you like chip tunes. And we, of course, have your user feedback and our phone talker for the day. So don't click away. It's Tomorrow Daily. Welcome back to the show. We're back. Um, oh, singing. I don't know. I'm feeling like very sing-songy this week. Because of the music of the next one? It must one. be it, yeah. Mm. The sing-songiness of the transitions are flawless. Super good. Like Beyonce. Uh, it is time, as always, for Back at Her Hackett. You did. You definitely threw me I off threw you of Beyonce. Off Beyonce. Flawless. <laughs> Uh, so this week's Back at Her Hackett is something that I think any retro gaming enthusiast can appreciate. This mm -hmm. is called the Lo-Fi SES. Okay. So here, here it is. Here's the video of it, and I'll explain. This is, uh, this is the board here. That's what it is. And it looks like maybe an SNES game controller, right? Yeah, a little controller. A little controller. But actually what it is, is it's a music controller that will create chiptunes music for you. No! He, this guy hooked it up to his guitar! Yes! So, it has 8-bit sounds. You can see him tapping on it and stuff. The, all those buttons right there that look like the actual, like, you know, B, A, Y, X. Those are chiptune sound effects. And then there's the top, like, sort of bumpers that let you choose the song, the different drum beats and all this other stuff. They have, they have cartridges. These are three different cartridges that you can insert. Oh, one man. of them, that final sound one, is a whole nother library of sounds. There's a USB, a link to the hack cartridge oh, that lets you plug in USB. You can work with it in Arduino. Uh, and then there is another one that is um, a clipping one called Smasher Brothers that will actually, it's almost a little like dubstep-y, 8-bit dubstep. So it'll clip your, clip your stuff. So it is really cool. And there's all functional LEDs on it. There's a cheat sheet on the Kickstarter that you can go check out if you want to go see it. Um, and, but it, it will have like LEDs that show the beat. It's a metronome. So the LED will show you so you never miss a beat on time. So you're always on time. Uh, there are... Basically, the, the default sounds are lo-fi drum set, so all the sounds that you hear, and you can create all kinds of music with Where's this. the speaker come from? 
Um, they, it, there's a headphone jack right in the bottom. Okay, so you can either listen to it or plug it into some sort of sound. Yeah, but I would imagine you could plug it in. 3.5 yeah. millimeter. Yeah, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Uh, what was the, the guitar thing? Sorry to. Uh, they, didn't, they didn't explain that they didn't, okay. a whole lot, but I have a it feeling. It looked like you can play through it, but that would require a 3.5 millimeter to the guitar right. jack. Right. I was going to say, you could probably play through it, but then it would probably end up being there's there's some extra cabling that would be required. That's a lot of notes for it to register. Yeah. Anyway. It's really cool. Okay. So um, this Deets. is, here's the details. Use a six AAA batteries. Ooh. But he said it'll give you like a full 24 hours of usage, right. back to back to back to back to back. Mm -hmm. So right. if you if you want a game jam for like 24 hours straight, you could, <laughs> if you wanted sleep. to, if you want to just never sleep yeah, and write a song for, for 24 hours, you could. Uh, here's the cost. It's 65 bucks right now to back for just the Lo-Fi SES, the little controller looking pack. Uh, if you want to back the the controller and one cartridge, it's 80 bucks. So really reasonable. Yeah. That's not bad. Especially if you're into like making your own sort of like little 8-bit music for anything. I mean, you, you could do short films, you could do you, games, you could do... Can you record it? So here's the cool thing. With the Arduino, you're able to, you can create your own software for it. It's fully open source. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, All right. Fully open source. And they were saying that um, they're really excited. And the reason they wanted to make these sort of boards, it appears like the reason they want to make these boards is they were very encouraging of people making 3D housings for them. So you could yeah, make like a, a 3D printed housing for it that looks like a controller of your choice, and then you could you could use it, which is super cool. I want to see somebody do power glove. That you would be do, amazing. Because there's the thing here. I think they mentioned that as like it was very comfortable, it was like super at like a power wearing a power glove. Like it was very comfortable to hold. Um, they worked really hard on it, and here's the best part. So you can build around this thing. Which it, is great. Absolutely, this is like really scalable. You can do a lot of stuff with this, and and I think my favorite part of it, though, because on Kickstarter, as we all know, it takes forever to get stuff. It can take 18 months, two years. I mean, people are still like waiting for things they backed over a year ago, mm -hmm. and it, it can take a really long time, especially when it's things that need to be manufactured. These guys are promising delivery if you get into the early part of the backing process, which is right now, December. Two months, like for Christmas. Right, like yeah, pretty much in time for Christmas. Maybe like even if it's late December, you'd still probably have it in time for Christmas. All right, yeah. So sixty dollars so, and then eighty-five. Eighty or sixty-five just for the Lo-Fi SES, and then six and then eighty for a Lo-Fi SES and like one cartridge of okay, your so choice. Okay, so twenty dollars for a cartridge. Yeah. Okay. Pretty all awesome. Right. What about like for it. all of them? Did they create a pack where oh, you Oh yeah, get all yeah. Of them? There's there's literally like a band pack at like five hundred dollar level that has like everything plus extra stuff. I mean it's like they have a lot of extras, they get a lot of stretch, like they have a lot of goals. I mean, just go over there and check it out. It's, okay. it's actually really, okay. really cool. If you yeah. if this is something that you're even moderately interested in, mm -hmm. I highly recommend yeah. checking it out. Chip tunes just look the really best. Neat. All right, so back it or hack it. I say I say go. Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah, back it. Back I it. say back it. That's let's cool. let's write some chip tunes. Right. I like uh well, I like everything, but I really like it seems affordable. It chiptune is something where you can experiment with music and it's open source. Yeah, so I'm it'll grow. Back it from Kale too. I'm High fives, about low this. fi yeah. SES. Yeah, yeah, get it for for someone for Christmas. That I may actually do. That's good. You, I know some people who probably want it. What um, you? Yeah, of course. Okay, well, I'm not getting it, my it, for you. Get it for me. Remember, we talked yesterday about you buy more stuff for yourself for that's Christmas true. than you that's for others. That's true. That's so. true. All right. Well, it is now time, as always, for, for user, user feedback. feedback. First yes. one's from Beyonce. First one's from Beyonce, who just wrote to us and said, hashtag flawless. <laughs> that was perfect. Hashtag I woke up like this. Nice, nice um, job. So user feedback, we asked you guys yesterday to tweet us or email us with hashtag TD Marvelcast and tell yeah. us either who you would play in a Marvel movie or who you would want somebody else to play a character in a Marvel movie. Who are you casting? Who's, who's casting who here? And you were Captain Marvel. I said I would be Captain Marvel. And I was Craven the Hunter. And you were Craven the Hunter. Um, so Rick wrote to us and said, Luke Evans for Black Bolt of Inhumans. Let his expressions do the talking if they do the origin story. Yeah. I like that. Right. And, and Luke yeah. Evans, for those of you who don't know, is the guy who plays, uh, I'm going to forget his name, the, the king of the dwarves in The Hobbit. He's that guy. Oh, yeah. He's, like, real tough. Yeah, he's tough. But, like, when you see him with, like, short hair and stuff, like, he looks totally different. But I think he could really pull it off. Yeah. I really feel like he could Black pull it off. Bo Black Bolt is kind of stoic, so that yeah. would be perfect. Very so. stoic in The yeah. Hobbit. So, uh, Sean wrote to us and said, <laughs> here's Ashley Escada as Captain Marvel, another excuse to break up my masterpiece. 
literally just took uh, my avatar square and pasted it right now. But he said he only did it because he didn't have access to Photoshop. He just had PowerPoint at his disposal and he made that in PowerPoint. That's good. Nobody can hear your horrible mean <laughs> words. Your hey, horrible mean hey, words. Hey, A for effort. A for effort. I like it. That's what I'm saying. You're, I like yeah, it. Listen, Sean, you're the only person who sent an actual picture. Nobody else sent a picture. I'm more disappointed than everybody See, else. See, exactly. Then, yeah. Chris wrote us and said, Katie Sackhoff would be perfect for Captain Marvel. Bring some Starbuck grit. That's everybody's favorite casting option. Everybody really likes that one. But I, she's it, in it's the right also age the wrong answer because Amber Heard is the right answer. Uh, well, speaking of Amber Heard, James wrote to us and said, I would be Rogue from the comic, not the movie, and probably a boy version. <laughs> I'm okay with Amber being Ms. Marvel. Yeah, so there you go. You got somebody in your, you got someone in your corner. Okay? Male, uh, male rogue. That's that's a good choice. Yeah. She's really cool. You can s take their powers and I like whatnot. That. It's, a, yeah. it's a really, it's kind of I mean, a cheat. It's, a it's cool. kind of a cheat one because you can have everybody's. Powers. I know it's a cheat. It's yeah. a little bit of a cheat, but, but it's I, a good like choice. It. And of course, our very last piece of user feedback is always our photographer of the day. Let it be Halloween. Let it be Halloween. Halloween. Let I it know. Be Halloween. Uh, well, okay. Is it, is it a Halloween picture? Kind, kind of. Oh. Okay. So Bilal wrote to us and says, Hi, Ashley and Kale. I really like the show. Watch it the same day when it's available. Oh. I went to Aberdeen in 2012, and I took several pictures on the way to a ruined castle called oh. Dunatar. I had an iPhone 4S at the time, and I've always been proud of most of the pictures I took that day. I want to know what pictures he was not proud of. Yeah. Like, that seemed like those were like, I was wasted at a pub. I got in trouble. This is what I got arrested right. in Scotland. Like, no, those are, I want to not littered. proud of. It's pictures you're not proud of. Not bad pictures, just ones you're not proud There's of. There's definitely a filter here, right? Um, it looks maybe either HDR, yeah, touched up a little in uh, Snapseed. It's a little more contrast, yeah, it's for beautiful. sure. Yeah, beautiful. But yeah, gorgeous. Looks amazing. Um, Where is this I again? Scotland? Uh, yeah, Aberdeen. Every place is more beautiful than Los it's Angeles. It's so green. Every yeah. place. I'm pretty sure there's, I mean, there's some really cool, like, places in L.A., but, like, nothing so lush. Yeah, nothing living. <laughs> nothing so green or alive. Everything is coated in a fine powder of broken dreams and <laughs> failed ambition in Los Angeles. <laughs> Are you a musician? Yeah. Like, uh, but tomorrow is your last chance, right, for tomorrow, the Halloween photo. Listen, if it's, photo. listen, I won't even do a phone talker for the day if it's not a Halloween picture. That's a good call. So if you carved a pumpkin. But it's gotta be a you, beautiful pumpkin. Listen, it's gotta be good, it's okay? It's gotta be legit. This, you're, you're being challenged right now by Kale and I mm -hmm. to send in your best Halloween picture mm. of anything. Is it your dog in a costume? I'll bring in a picture of my dog in costume tomorrow. Right. Uh, we will be in costume tomorrow. Yeah. So but we're not messing not, around. If you it's guys. not a good photo, we're going to show a photo of Beyonce. Yeah, so. just flawless. I'm going to show a photo of a Beyonce pumpkin. Pumpkin carved Does, to be Beyonce. Think, it, it exists. Don't look it up. Don't look it up. It if you're exists. watching or listening, we'll show don't it look to you it tomorrow. up. It's fine. We'll find one. We'll it's not show a big deal. No, I'll, I'd already, I have it saved. I got it saved right okay. on my phone. All right, right on. Um, so if you want to send over <laughs> your photography, it better be Halloween related. Oh, please, please, please. please. Uh, and if not, we're going to have to have them do it maybe Monday after Halloween's over. Because the thing is, is Halloween is not quite here yet as of tomorrow. It's the 30th. And realize that not everybody celebrates Halloween. Right, no, like, that's true. This is like a but, United but States. But listen, thing. guys, there's always a weird really weird scary place that is in your hometown right for cemetery, monday cemetery yeah just, just go to the cemetery go to the cemetery take a weird picture and, and then uh if you uh if you can for monday you can do dia de los muertos yeah costumes dia de los muertos celebrations i mean all kinds of stuff so we're encouraging you we're encouraging you but yeah tomorrow at cnet.com uh you can also email over the well here's here's the deal guys hashtag the day today we're gonna do something a little bit different we just want you to tweet TD and Therese, and we want you to tag NASA in your tweet and just give send them some encouragement. Yeah, please do. Just send them some encouragement. That's what we want from you guys today. Like we don't, I mean, it's just, we gotta, we, we gotta just pump everybody up about science. Wow, like just I really give like them, this one. Give them some encouragement. Yeah. Be like, you know what guys, just keep going because you're doing, you're doing great things. Mm -hmm. I feel like they need that from everybody. Yeah, of course. So yeah, show, get, send a little support. That's all we ask. That's all we ask today. Uh, but other than that, if you want to just chit-chat with us on social media, you can do that. We're at Tomorrow Daily. 
Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. I, I feel bad. I need to post more on Instagram. Yeah. I'm posting off there. I like that people have been tagging Tomorrow Daily and then tagging our personal tagging accounts. Tagging us, It's easier yeah. for me to find. Easier for, for sure. us yeah. to see. So, um, and then, of course, you can find us at uh, Tomorrow Daily TV on Google Plus if you are so inclined. Um, and uh, make sure to subscribe to the show. It really helps out. Yeah. Subscribe, rate the show if you watch it through like iTunes. Like, give us five stars. Yeah, thank you, uh, listeners, people that yeah. are just listening too. And only judge the show on its highest point. So don't, yeah. I mean, don't don't factor in any low stuff. No, just the Beyonce no jokes. averages. Yeah. Just say this was the high point, and I give that five stars. So five stars. <laughs> Blacked out for the rest of it, but totally. that part was amazing. Yeah, exactly. Okay, good. Um, but uh, yeah, and that's pretty much it. So, uh, Kale, where can people find you on the internet? YouTube.com/slash Kale Anonymous. Uh, yeah, that's, that's I think if you just type Kale Anonymous into a Google search into a Google bar, search, it, you, just, you can be on Kale Watch for instantly. Kale Watch all day, every day. Every day. Every day. All right, guys, that's it for the show today. We will be back tomorrow in costume. It's ready. Be fun. We're pre Halloween prep. We have the day before Halloween. We're very excited about it. Uh, but because we don't do a Halloween show, we have to dress up tomorrow. So uh, until then, be good humans, and we'll see you next time. Bye.